everybody. Thanks for watching Access Hockey MI. We appreciate your support on the Watching Our YouTube Station channel. And we really like that um, you guys comment and that you like the video. And you should do all those things if you haven't yet. <laughs> As always. All the time. Today we're going to be talking about the Detroit prospect loans that we've had so far this season. So it's been a weird season, as you all know. The season was paused. It's now back on, at least for the NHL. Um, they're in the second round of the playoffs currently at the time of this video. Um, and so we've been keeping up, of course, on transactions that are made throughout the year for the AHL and the NHL just because, you know, the Red Wings aren't in the playoffs right now. So we had noticed that a lot of the players, um, the Euros at least, that we have on our team or at least contracted through our team um, have been loaned to European leagues out there. So we wanted to talk about that <laughs> <Various> today. <leagues. laughs> we wanted to talk about that today and kind of how we think that's going to impact the season and how mm -hmm. important that is um, for those players in particular. So let's get started. Yes. So, so far they've loaned um, five players. So Gustav Lindstrom, Philip Zadina, Moritz Seider, Philip Ronick, and Matthias Brumi. Um, all of them, I, I have to say it like that, <laughs> otherwise I say it wrong in my head. Anyway, so they're all playing over in Europe right now. They've all been loaned for the seasons, prospectively. Um, a lot of them, it looks like it's going to be until the NHL or AHL season starts. So we don't really know how long it's going to be for, but the premise of this is is that they are playing in a league. Mm -hmm. um, these are all prospects, technically, even though Ronick has been with the team, you know, playing at the NHL level for, what, two, three seasons now. But he's still considered a developing prospect, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were kind of spitballing and thinking about this and what it means as far as their development goes and how that could impact the upcoming season. Now, all these guys being Euros and they are going to be playing in leagues um, and they're all developing athletes, is this kind of a foreshadowing to them maybe getting groomed to start at an NHL level when the season resumes? Because they're going to be a step ahead of the other guys right now. We already kind of expected uh, Gustav Lindstrom to start with mm -hmm. the NHL, so with the Detroit Red Wings. Philip Zadina ended last season with the Red Wings before he was, I believe he was injured right before mm -hmm. um, seasons, the season paused slash stopped. Moritz Sider has been on a fast track to the NHL, um, and mm -hmm. we think we are... Our guess was that he would do some time in the AHL and be pulled up probably maybe beginning to mid-season yep. to the NHL level um, just because he is progressing quite quickly and he's already a very talented defenseman. Phil Bronick, like Rachel said, has been with the Red Wings for at least a couple of seasons already, so we expect him to start with the NHL regardless of him being loaned. Yeah. Um, Broomy was, I believe, expected to be AHL, so mm -hmm. I'm thinking he would probably still stay AHL, but the reason this is all important is because while other players, domestic players and Canadian players, um, might play drop-in hockey, I believe that's still going on in some states, of course, and I believe just to stay um, up on it, right. and then I know they do that during um, the off-season anyway. They do drop-in leagues, they do drop-in games, just mm -hmm. to keep fresh, of course, and you got to keep your skating um, pretty sharp. But ha. to play, ha! That was know. nice. <laughs> this is just natural. Just but so to play, cool. but to play in a competitive league um, to start, I think that's going to put these guys on a bit of a higher playing field mm -hmm. as far as development goes going into the start of the NHL AHL season. Yep, and, and like Janae had said too, we have a lot of Canadian and U.S. players that mm -hmm. they are here currently, so it kind of begs the question of, you know, with, with college hockey, some of our prospects might not be able to go that route and right. get some ice time. So how they use this time to find ice and to find teams to play for and how they choose to develop, it's going to be a stark contrast to these guys playing at the league level over in Europe. Yeah. Um, so they do. I, it, this will create kind of an advantage, and we're hoping to see, and it would be really cool to see, maybe even the level of interior competition increase with these domestic yeah. players. Like if if they know other guys are you know playing drop-in or playing over in Europe consistently, what are they going to do to make sure that they are pushing themselves further yeah. and further in development. I think, here. I think that's very important. And, of course, you like to have that level of competition mm -hmm. within a team to be better, not to um, necessarily outplay someone on your team, of course, but these guys are playing for spots in the NHL. Right. So, in a sense, the domestic players, so Canadian, U.S., the guys who aren't going to be loaned, would have to look at these guys who are going to be playing and say, okay, i got to stay up on it. Right. Um, these guys are going to have some play time before we even start the season. They could st they could be an edge above me, that kind of a thing. Yeah. And that's pretty much kind of what we're saying is that this could be really great for mm -hmm. these five players to get this 
Um, and for them to be able to start to play, I think it, just getting back to the normalcy, I right. think will be really good. Normal as far as it can be um, right. right off the bat. Exactly. And with these domestic players, what I'm interested to see too is the level of creativity that comes out of this. Yeah. How do they solve this problem where it might be seen almost as an unfair advantage for these Europeans to be able to have that opportunity, but that's an opportunity that's been presented. Yeah. It's great for them. It's exciting for them. I think it's very and smart of Detroit to absolutely. loan them out too. I really do think it's going to yeah. make them and we're not really sure how many other teams have done this um we're not really sure if that's something that they've been looking at but i imagine that this will even put these players above other Mm -hmm. teams who maybe haven't thought this Mm -hmm. far ahead maybe so my question would be too going forward so looking ahead to the upcoming draft when that does happen the upcoming season do you think detroit is going to focus a little bit more on european development because it's so unknown and because it's playing in europe right now do you think they're going to kind of switch gears and look at more Euros to draft. I personally think that it would be smart to not change too much of your of what you had going already. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to play always in this bubble. The idea of what's going on is that eventually we're going to return to some sort. Now, I don't want to say some sort of normal because I hate hearing that. Yeah. Um, I it's just, the new normal. Yeah, it's not the new normal. <laughs> I, we won't accept that. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. I refuse. But what I think would be, I think that we already are looking more toward a European um, development as far as like players from Europe just because mm-hmm. they're so great and they're so well-rounded and they come from very talented leagues. Mm-hmm. I think it's. I think they're going to keep it to where they can go either way if they do college because these players this kind of stuff this particular pandemic isn't a normal thing right but times where they can't find ice is normal Mm -hmm. times where they their schedule just isn't going to allow it times when maybe they're sick all this kind of stuff does come into play all the Mm -hmm. time so players who can adapt is going right. to be really important. So you don't want to start drafting based on like, oh no, we might have another pandemic. This is going to be a long-term like, thing. Like you don't yeah. really want to do that. You want to do it as much as you have been doing right. it. That's you want to put opinion. yourself in a, and I, I agree, you want to put yourself in a position where you can go either way, where you're not restricting yourself to one you, vein you of never, development. Yeah, you like, want to keep that open for, for sure. expanding and I think developmental that, types. I think that with drafting more at Cider, um, and you know the euros that we have. I like drafting euros yeah. because I think, like I said, they're extremely talented. They just play different. They're developed well. Yeah. Um, so I think that they're going to do that as much as they had mm-hmm. been, maybe a little more. But I don't think it's going to be because mm-hmm. of what's going on. Right. I agree. I think that's a good good way to view. Yeah. It. And I don't think, especially with something like this. I don't think general management would look at it and go, oh, no, we have to switch plans yeah. completely. That would be a little Everybody's reckless Everybody's professional. To do that. Everybody's yeah. taking it as it comes. I am interested to see how other teams respond in the draft, though, if they decide to take more of a Euro route, hoping that that might not be the only route you can develop, but kind of putting all their yeah. you know, eggs in one basket. You're going to find talented hockey players in Europe. Yeah. You're going to find them in domestically in the United States and in Canada. Yep. You're going to find them where they come from. So I think that it's just going to be going forward, of course, something that we have to think about. But I think that I don't think it's going to change that much how There's they draft. There's going to be some really creative solutions coming out of yeah. all this, for sure, well, as far as I, development goes. And, yeah, maybe that's just great anyway to have different opportunities for right. players and different ways for them to stay fresh even during the summer. That might yep. just be something they look at to develop something that keeps them fresh, mm-hmm. um, that keeps them maybe even more fresh than other teams if yep. they come up with programs that can do that for them. Yep. But then again, it is individual with the hockey player. Right. They have to... Ha- they have to be responsible for their own development as well as something. Yeah, and that's where the competition is going to come in. That's yes. really fun to for watch. For the competition. For the competition, <laughs> exactly. So um, let us know what you think about the prospects that have been loaned to other teams, um, what you think that might gain them or what they might lose from it. Um, let us know what you think about the current playoff situation. Again, Boston can't win. And as of this video, they have not yet Anyone won. Anyone so. but Boston. Anyone but Boston, Please. honestly. And Texas or um, Dallas. I don't, like, mm. I don't know. I'm not a big Dallas guy <laughs> really either. So. I take issue with most teams, actually. Honestly, I don't mind who wins as long as it's not <laughs> Dallas or Boston. <laughs> so that's my opinion. Let me know what yours is. Um, and then, of course, keep watching for our next videos. And, again, we appreciate you coming alongside us and supporting us in our dream of talking about hockey yes. all the time. So we will see you guys next time. <laughs>